I got this Husqvarna in today. One of the guys that work here, it's one of these quick releases. One of these guys that work here brought it to me and said it won't run. Did a little checking on it. Here it is, fuel line. Somebody's put uh, ethanol in it. And if you see there, down inside of it, all that white crud, the white crud breaks loose. And this is extremely hard and brittle and bust up. That white crud gets into the carburetor and clogs it up. The end of the hose rotted off. So uh, we got to put fuel line in it, or two fuel lines in it. So we'll pull it down and uh, show you how to replace fuel lines and a couple tricks on how to do it. There is the There is the, what it is. It's a uh, nice looking little machine. It just won't run. So we'll fix it. And uh, I'll show you how we go about that. Show you how to adjust the carburetor and all. Okay, you get your new fuel line here. And this is the way I install it. Obviously, it don't fit through the hole. I mean, it does, but it don't. So what I do is take and uh, start cutting it. like so cut it back just cut the top off of it we cut it cut the top of it off so now if you look at the end it will curl a lot tighter so we just stick it in the hole here now that we got it cut where it'll fit stick it in there and then i'm gonna take my plier and i'm gonna stick through i might not be able to get the pliers down in there far enough I'm gonna take something and get it going this way. Okay. Now, if you see, I've got it laid that way. So it's laid back this way. Okay, score a whole bit again. I'm gonna grab it with my pliers. I'm gonna kind of help it with my other hand here. It's got to be extremely tight fit so the gas don't leak. So that's why I cut it down like that to get it to come in there. And once you get it, once you get it started, usually it comes pretty easy here. There we go. Now we get it up here to where I can grab a hold of it. And we'll just start walking it through there. It's one reason you don't really want to do it with gas in there. But this is a $7 a quart gas, so I hate to lose it. I'll love it anyway. So right there is where I stopped cutting on it. So I'm gonna do it like so. Trim that off. Push that down. Come over here. We're gonna leave a little extra trim that and then we're gonna do it all over again. And we'll do the other line the same way. It's 
and that's why it broke last time. You see, um, I'm cutting thin, thin, then I go thick, and I got a bad spot in it there. That's why it broke. But you just keep cutting it, try to try to cut it the best you can going up through there. And there's no science to it. You just keep easing on. I had to do it a little longer this time because I'm back behind that other one. And I want to have enough to pull it up where I can get to it. There the two are. They're both installed. There's one coming up this way and the other one's laying across down there. So that's how you do it. And these with these gas caps like this, they got a big wing on them. You basically just bend that wing, hang on. Car up here. Bend that wing and stick it down in there. And then you lock in. And this one goes back together. Ooh. This one, there's a rubber grommet down here that's got to go in your tank. So you, you hook that rubber grommet in like so. These lines are way too long. Stick those lines on there, like so. Get your rubber grommet hooked up right there. So you can see. Then you got this piece that goes on. It's got two spots for the rubber grommets. And you've got this piece that goes on over here. Um, it goes like so. Uh-huh. We'll get back with you as soon as we uh, we get it back together and we'll show you how it runs. Okay, we got it back together. We're going to see if it runs. It says pump it up here. So we're going to pump it a few times. Turn the choke on. Seems to run pretty good. We gotta adjust the, the throttle on it or the the idle on it and it should be good to go. And put the air filter back in it. But that's how you fix one um, that you put ethanol in. You've got to replace those fuel lines. I had two foot of fuel line, I bought two foot, and this is what I got left over. So it's uh, well, I better not tell you that measurement. But anyway, thanks. See you on the next one. I need to have a little fuel run for it. It's doing pretty good. We get some fuel run through it and get the carbon or the the gook build up that's in there burn out. Basically, when the uh, ethanol dries, 
it leaves the oil behind. So your gas is made up of oil and alcohol, basically. And the alcohol burns off or evaporates and it leaves an oily residue. Well, that oily residue gets gummed up in the carburetor. And after you run new gas through it for a while, it'll clean that residue out. And as that residue cleans out more and more, it'll run better and better and better. But it's well worth paying the extra money for the true, true fuel. Um, it's a synthetic gas. It doesn't give you half as many problems as the um, pump gas. If you can still get regular gas without ethanol, you're good. Or uh, steel makes it, Husqvarna makes it, uh, everybody makes that true fuel, like what I'm saying here. This is a can of it. it uh, it's just synthetic gas and it's got, uh, I believe it's got a two year shelf life and it's already pre-mixed. They've got three or four different mixtures. But it is, uh, it's what I've been using in my, my personal stuff. Uh, we do not use it here at the shop, but I do use it in all of my personal equipment and it seems to help a lot. Um, it's pretty expensive though. It's uh, $6 a quart. And if you buy uh, six quarts at a time, it brings it down to like $4 a quart. So it's still, if you're gonna do a lot of it, it's kind of hard to justify it, but if I was gonna do a lot, I would probably run regular ethanol fuel through it and then chase it with that. So when it's set up over the winter, it'll have that good stuff in it where it won't evaporate out. But that one's ready to go and uh, it's ready for somebody to run it for another couple seasons. This is a buddy of mine, so I just went ahead and uh, I fixed it for him. We do not run us on here at the shop, we run all steels. Um, and we got a few echoes left, but mostly steels. Um, and you can see we tear them up pretty quick. All these are non-repairable. Um, we pull parts off of them constantly, but they're not, they're all repairable. They're not worth repairing. Let's put it that way. Like that one there needs a cylinder in it. Well, that cylinder costs over half of what the machine costs. So we'll just leave it there and when the guy rips a uh, strap off another one, we'll pull it or, you know, knock a hole in the gas tank, we'll pull it or the muffler goes bad, we'll pull it, stuff like that. So that's what we do to all those. Comment, rate, subscribe to us and uh, give us a thumbs up. It helps the channel a lot. Um, subscribe if you haven't already and we'll catch you on the next one.